everyone. Welcome to week 14. Uh, we have just wrapped up the critique essay, so I want to thank you guys for all of your hard work on that. I'm looking forward to reading about your research and your ideas for where those sources could take someone um, if they were writing a larger project. Now, as we move into our next and final essay, the analysis, you may decide to continue with the topic that you chose for your critique, in which case you've already been doing some of the research and thinking. And so I would recommend that to a lot of you, uh, but you're also totally free to explore a new topic. And I want to talk a little bit today about what this paper is. What is an analysis? How is it like and different from other projects we've worked on in 1101 and 1102? And what are our goals for these next couple of weeks? So it's focused on primarily uh, just introducing the concept of analysis as its own genre of essay, what that's going to look like for you for your final paper, and then in the next video for this week, which I'll be posting tomorrow, we'll take a look at the assigned readings, all dealing in some ways with vampires for this week, and examine how those authors are conducting analyses, what they're doing uh, when it comes to examining a topic and putting forth an argument about its meaning or its value in some way. So today, I just want to take a little bit of time to examine what is an analysis at its core and encourage you to make sure you read over the instructions on Canvas for the analysis essay that we're now going to be working on. Now, what is an analysis? Well, we've encountered this word before. In 1101, you wrote an analytical response to a text and also most likely a rhetorical analysis as well. Oftentimes, when we talk about the things that we read, we are analyzing in some fashion. We are studying something and reflecting upon it. But if we want to look at the genre of an analysis essay, uh, particularly we would say that this is a type of argument, right? So this is an argument that you are making, but specifically it's a bit different than just taking a position on an issue in which you argue for or against plastic straws or, um, you know, vaccinations or other kinds of arguments you may have read or written before. Instead, we are taking a subject of study, which could be a story, a film, an object, a moment in history, and then we're breaking it down, studying each part of it in order to ultimately understand it better, and then make an argument about it. And that could mean a lot of different things. There's a lot of different ways you can analyze something. And we've had some experience with that in our different assignments. And you've read articles uh, this semester that all seek to analyze different subjects, monsters, fears, moments in history, groups of people. And they've analyzed them in some way and they had a particular method for doing so. And so that's really what we want to begin to think about is how do you conduct an analysis in a systematic, researched way? Well, what we do is we find an analytical tool, and this is going to come from research that you conduct. An analytical tool is basically a principle or definition. Um, it could be study of trauma, like we saw in a recent article about The Walking Dead. It could be the definition of a form of ethics or a particular monster. It could be any number of things that you take to help you view a subject. So you might think of an analysis as a kind of lens, something that you look through in order to help you view a subject in a different way. So the lens that I put on when I want to analyze something that determines how I can interpret it or how I can understand it better. And so for each person, you could theoretically analyze the same subject, but depending upon what approach you take, which analytical tool uh, you take up, 
you're going to see different things and argue different things. So ultimately the goal of an analysis essay is to convince your reader of two things. That your analytical tool is a good one for the job, right? And that your resulting examination of your subject, your analysis through that lens is interesting, valid, or unique in some way. And that your analysis helps us to see something about your subject that we might not have been aware of otherwise, and that maybe you wouldn't have ever thought of either if you hadn't taken this particular analytical approach. And where does this come from? It's going to come from research. So we approach subjects with initial opinions, ideas, questions, and then we turn to research and we go deeper and deeper into our research to help us find new ways of approaching a subject that either is new to us or we may think we're very familiar with, but could still explore in a different way. So we've seen this in things that we've read this semester. All of the major essays we've read have been analytical arguments in which each author takes a subject, a topic, and approaches it from their own analytical lens, where Chuck Klosterman looks at modern life through the lens of the zombie. So he's really seeking to understand humans better by applying the definition of a zombie to them. Some of the strategies he uses that come from fields of study with lots of research behind them, technology, cultural studies, he's bringing in particular analytical methods to help him make his argument. When we read Peter H. Brothers' Japan's Nuclear Nightmare, How the Bomb Became a Beast Called Godzilla, the subject of study of analysis was Godzilla and also the Japanese people post-World War II. And so for brothers to approach that subject in a new way, in a unique way, he did historical research, he drew upon skills of film analysis, he also approached his subject of analysis from a genre of, I guess, a field of study we call cultural studies, which really encompasses lots of different tools, lots of different kinds of research that help us understand culture better. So one person could have analyzed Godzilla from an entirely different perspective, a different analytical approach, and came up with a very different article than Peter Brothers did. But his approach determined the kind of argument he was able to make about what Godzilla means for an understanding of Japanese trauma. Then we have Stephen T. Asma's Monsters in the Moral Imagination, which I've come back to continually, because his is very much an example of an analysis. He is examining human beings and their connections to monster stories, be they real or fictional, and using a framework of ethics, philosophy, and moral psychology to better understand us and our fears and our desires. So he's analyzing people and monsters through these particular lenses and then comes to conclusions that he never would have if he didn't analyze from this perspective. Most recently, we read Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse, Trauma and Transformation in AMC's The Walking Dead by George Heigman, who approached a TV show his subject of study and brought with him analytical tools that came from research in psychology, specifically trauma studies, and also ethics. So all of these readings are examples of analytical arguments in which someone took a topic, be it humans, zombies, moments in histories, um, particular monsters, particular ways of thinking, and they sought to understand these subjects better through research they conducted into film analysis or cultural studies, philosophy, ethics, psychology. And then they took those two things and put them together. What do I see in Godzilla if I come at it from the analytical lens of 
cultural studies. What do I see in The Walking Dead if I come at it from a psychological perspective? That's what we're aiming for in an analytical argument. And the readings that you're doing for this week are also doing such things, right? Bringing a subject to light and analyzing it from a particular perspective. So we can look at an example analysis, just a short paragraph of something that I hope is familiar to most of you, the film The Wizard of Oz. So this is a short paragraph from an analysis written about this film. And let's take a look here and see how is this writer analyzing their subject? What lens are they looking through to see something new and different and share that with us? So here we go. At the dawn of adolescence, the very time she should start to distance herself from Aunt Em and Uncle Henry, the surrogate parents who raised her on their Kansas farm, Dorothy Gale experiences a hurtful reawakening of her fear that these loved ones will be rudely ripped from her, especially her aunt, M, M for mother. All right, so that is a brief take on the significance of The Wizard of Oz in terms of adolescent experience in the character of Dorothy Gale. So we are looking at this film through the lens of psychology, particularly what we call psychoanalysis. And so it should probably be no surprise that this paragraph comes from an essay by a psychiatrist named Harvey Greenberg. His overall essay incorporates general psychological research, and that helps him to analyze this film in a different way than somebody else. So his research and his expertise helps him to view his subject, study its parts, and discover a new meaning that he can then make an argument for throughout the course of this whole essay to try to convince us that, okay, if there's a meaning here, there's a value uh, that maybe we didn't think of before. And that's the goal of an analysis. So he conducts research, but ultimately the observations that he makes are his own. He's making an argument, but it's not, do you agree or disagree with this Thing. Rather, it's more of an investigation. It extends the critique, which was, I referred to it as a process of exploration and curiosity. Now we're taking that kind of approach to a topic and saying, well, now it's time to settle upon a particular meaning that you want to share with your reader, that you want to convince them is worth a second glance. Now let's look at another example, somebody else's analysis of The Wizard of Oz. Now this is just a short paragraph from a longer piece, but let's take a look at how a different person with a different analytical approach comes to the same subject of study and argues something entirely different. The Wizard of Oz was originally written as a political allegory about grassroots protests. It may seem harder to believe than Emerald City, but the Tin Woodsman is the industrial worker, the Scarecrow is the struggling farmer, and the Wizard is the President, who is powerful only as long as he succeeds in deceiving the people. So here we have a different analytical tool. In this case, if you read the rest of the article, it's coming primarily from Marxist theory. So this writer is trying to see if the Wizard of Oz can tell us anything about politics and class, even if on the surface you might not have seen that, but maybe the longer you think about it and the more of his essay you read, he might be able to convince you that, oh, there's something here. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe it's just the reader bringing something to it. But if we can derive meaning from it and have an interesting conversation about it and understand something in a new and better way, then that's a good thing, right? That's the beauty, I think, of analysis. There can be many, and there's room for all of them, but you have to do the legwork in order to make your analysis useful, convincing, and not just a bunch of BS. So when it comes to writing an analysis, we might ask, 
are all analyses created equal? Can you take any topic and say anything about it and say, well, that's just my opinion. That's my analysis. Not exactly. So both of those analyses about the Wizard of Oz are valid. If the writer and the rest of their essay can make a convincing case through a combination of supporting sources and original insights. So you have to have a reason for using that analytical approach and then work to convince your reader that you are onto something. This requires skills and critique and synthesis, which we were just practicing in your previous essay. And now we'll go further, do more research, do more thinking, and see what we can come up with in an analytical argument. So using an analytical tool both creates and limits the possibilities for analysis. This means that five of you could analyze The Walking Dead and focus on different things based upon your interests, your observations, and your supporting research. So you could say a million things about all of the episodes of The Walking Dead, but that's a long paper, that's a book, and it may not be that interesting or focused. So choosing an analytical approach helps limit you to a paper that you can reasonably write from 800 to 1,000 words, and it's also going to make it more focused and interesting for your reader. So this is actually a tool that helps you as much as it also helps your reader, uh, I suppose, understand a subject in a better way. So the beauty, the power of analysis is that it helps us to see something in a way we might not otherwise have ever considered. So you get to go through that as you write your paper, and then you get to share it with your reader. So we see something differently than maybe we ever would have before. So your analysis is going to be due Wednesday the 29th, which is during finals week. And that's the latest I can give you because I have to have time to grade it and submit final grades. There's an annotated bibliography slash topic proposal that is going to be due on Sunday, April 19th. And that is something the directions are also up on Canvas. I'm going to talk more about it, but it will help you write your actual analysis paper and give me a chance to see you know, what are your plans? What are you working on? So ultimately, you have to choose a topic, and you want to choose it soon. You may decide to continue with what you chose for the critique. You may go in a different direction. If you read the analysis directions on the Canvas assignment page, I give you some ideas and guidance. We continue to talk more about that, but I encourage you to read the analysis instructions now and get a sense of your options and hopefully start brainstorming some ideas. Once you've settled upon a topic, then it'll be time to figure out your analytical approach. How are you going to talk about this topic? How are you going to research sources that will help you make an argument about this topic? So that might mean a particular method of analysis, historical, psychological, I name some others in the analysis instructions on Canvas, or it could be the use of a particular definition or concept that maybe helps you understand something else better. So for instance, with Chuck Klosterman, he defines the zombie and then understands humans better because of that definition and how he uses it as a tool to analyze human behavior. He also brings in additional research about technology and social media and helps us once again view human behavior differently with those things in mind. In Monsters and the Moral Imagination, Asthma defines monsters and the concept of the moral imagination. That wasn't his, it came from his research. But he combined those things as well as, as his own expertise in ethics and moral psychology to examine humans and their fears and their ways of coping with fears. He gave us his own original argument, but it was based upon a definition and an analytical approach that he brought to his subject. 
So that's what we'll be working on these next couple of weeks. We'll read some articles and study how do these authors approach their topics through a particular analytical lens and then discuss how do you develop your approach? What kind of research should you conduct? How might you build upon research you've already done? And come up with a final paper that is hopefully interesting to you and I'm sure will be interesting to me. So that's what I've got for you guys today. What I want you to do now, in addition to reading um, the assignments for this week, is to look at the analysis instructions on Canvas and also take a look at the annotated bibliography instructions. So those will be things you want to keep in mind as you are reading um, different examples of analyses so that you can begin to consider, well, what do I want to analyze? What am I thinking of? And if at any point an idea occurs to you and you want to talk about it, shoot me an email, come to office hours on Skype, whatever you want to do. But this is something that because the semester's closing in, you'll have to think about pretty quickly. So next video coming up tomorrow is going to be about the vampire readings. And I'll also discuss how those readings are analyzing things on their own. All right. Thanks, everybody. And I will talk to you soon.